Terry has a megaphone. The vice presidential nominee for the Green Party of the United States, Ajamu Baraka! Is ready to go. My brothers and sisters, it is an honor to be with you this afternoon here at this uh, phony debate <laughs> because if you're not going to include all of the people who have popular support in this country, it can't be anything else but a phony debate. Yeah. So we are here to have a presence to say to the people of this country that everyone should have a choice. Everyone should have an opportunity to hear the people who are attempting to run for the highest office to represent the people of this country. And it, it is a shame and a contradiction that we have this phony corporation that is excluding the voices of the people. So we are here to have our own debate, to have our own conversation with the people. We are here with our leader who has been around this country raising the issues, answering some of the questions, and talking about the future we are trying to build here in this country. So it is my pleasure, it is my honor to present our leader, the real voice of leadership and progress here in this country, Dr. Jill Stein. democracy looks like. We are the real debate here. On the other side of this highway, we have the police state over there, but the real debate is taking place here because we the people deserve a voice in this debate. As Ajamu was saying, this Commission on Presidential Debates is a fake commission. This is a private corporation oh, that's right. started and run by the Democratic and Republican parties for the purpose of silencing political opposition. That is two-party tyranny. That is not democracy. In this election, we are at a realignment moment. So this is actually history that we are making here together tonight. We will remember this as the day that the two-party system begins to finally unwind and for us to leave it behind as we should because the American people no longer support these two corporate sponsored political parties funded by predatory banks by fossil fuel giants, by war profiteers, by insurance companies. We, together, are the only voice in this election that is not bought and paid for by the big banks, by the Wall Street uh, investment companies, by the war investors and manufacturers. We're the only ones that are not taking money from the lobbyists, from the corporate interests, and that does not have a super PAC. So we are the only voice in this debate to speak of, by, and for the American people who are so desperately needing a voice at this time. They tell us that we are in a recovery, 
but for most Americans, it is still an emergency. That's right. It's yeah. With half of Americans now sharing 1% of the wealth of this nation, according to last week's Congressional Budget Office report, 50% of Americans have exactly 1% of the wealth and are being thrown under the bus. 75% of the wealth is in the hands of the top 10%. This is not a sustainable economy. This is not a just economy. We have an entire generation of young people who are locked in predatory student loan debt with no way out. The Democrats and Republicans saw fit to bail out the crooks on Wall Street we say it's time to bail out the victims of that waste, fraud, and abuse. The generation locked in student loan debt. We say it's time to meet the crisis of the climate together with the crisis of the economy. We can solve them both together, and they can only be solved together through an emergency jobs program that will put 20 million people to work in good wage, living wage, full-time and secure jobs, creating the green economy of the future. We call for 100% clean renewable energy by 2030. We call for a healthy, sustainable and organic food system that gets rid of food deserts, That's that right. restores our health as we deserve. A big part of the climate crisis is that industrial food system. And we call for a right to affordable, high quality public transportation that includes the right to recreational transportation yeah. so we can walk and bike safely on our way to transit hubs. This is how we get healthy. In doing so, we not only revive the economy, we turn the tide on climate change, and we make the friggin' wars for oil obsolete. The Green New Deal pays for itself simply by the improvements in our health from eliminating fossil fuels, which kill 200,000 people every year, and that is just the tip of the iceberg, the impacts from these deadly fossil fuels. We get so much healthier by moving to clean renewable energy that we save enough money to quickly pay the costs of the green energy transition. This is a win, win, win yes. for our economy. Yes. Let the people win. We can win. We can also win by putting an end to police violence, to mass incarceration, yeah. and to the racist war on drugs. Yeah. Right. Legalize it. Legalize this is how we ensure that every black life matters. And we put an end to police violence by creating, I'm in charge of the mic. A, for every community, a police review board to ensure that communities are in control of their police, yeah. not the other way around. And we call for a welcoming path to citizenship for the immigrants who have always been at the backbone of our economy, of our communities, and our culture. A welcoming path. And in order to meet this crisis of immigration, the most important thing we can do is to stop causing it in the first place. <laughs> by renegotiating NAFTA and by stopping the Trans-Pacific Partnership, yeah. which would be NAFTA on steroids, by ending the war on drugs, which Yay. has killed 100,000 people in Mexico alone. That's why people are fleeing here as the refugees that we are creating through these misguided policies. And we say to Donald Trump, we don't need your wall. We just need to stop invading other countries and turning people into refugees. So we can have 
an America and a world that works for all of us by being here tonight. We are standing up and we are standing together and we will not be silenced. We can have this world that we deserve, but not by giving it over to a lesser evil politician or a lesser evil political party, because it is a race to the bottom between the greater and the lesser evil. Yeah, that's right. There may be differences between them, but those differences are not big enough to save your job, to save your life, or to save the planet. This is the Hail Mary moment. We do not have time. The clock is ticking. We must stand up and we must take action like the brave indigenous leaders at the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. Yeah. Who are standing for us all in their defense of human rights, in their defense of our water supply, and in defense of our climate, and in defense of our democracy. And they demonstrate how when we stand up with the courage that we need, we have the numbers that we need. In fact, let me mention that the number of young people locked into predatory student loan debt, that alone is enough to actually win a three-way presidential race. 43 million. So do not accept for a minute this predatory idea, this propaganda that we are powerless. Right. We are only powerless if we think we are. In the words of Alice Walker, the biggest way people give up power is by not knowing we have it to start with. We have it, we're going to use it, and we are not giving up. That's right. Tonight is a turning point. We can no longer go forward into the future and allow ourselves to be silenced, to be intimidated, and to have our political power ripped from us. Because in fact, we are the majority. We reflect the basic values, the humanitarian and the community values of America. We reflect the community values and humanitarian values all across the world. We are standing up for an America and a world that works for all of us. We reflect the vision and the values of America, and we have all the numbers that it takes when we stand up. So we say it's time to reject the lesser evil and to fight for the greater good. the power to create an America and a world that works for all of us. And the power to create that world is not just in our hopes, it's not just in our dreams, right here and now, outside the barred gates of Hofstra University, yeah. that power is in our hands. Thank you. We're going to take a few questions from the press. Great. Sure. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you, Jill. And thank you, Ajamu. We need open debates, not a security state. 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 We're gonna take we're gonna take just a few questions from the media. If there are any media folks with questions, please identify. Go ahead. What's your future for uh, the likes of this, uh, you know, the cannabis situation in New York State with either descheduling or getting the medicine to the vets? Great. So, uh, if we have the honor to serve, one of the first things that our administration will do is to instruct the Drug Enforcement Agency to do a really radical thing and that is to use science in determining what substances will and will not be scheduled. Because the minute they do that,
cannabis and hemp will come off the list of scheduled substances. Next question right from the media. Right what are you right trying here, to do right to get into the debates? Right Next um, debates. I'm trying to Next future debates. Yes. 2020? <laughs> no, this year. We're 2020. If yes, you're no, right, right now. Because, you know, in my view, this has only begun. I heard today uh, a new statistic. I believe it was NBC or it might have been ABC that uh, a new poll of millennials actually shows now that 54% of millennials are considering <laughs> seriously voting for an independent third party yeah. candidate. <laughs> so as people begin to hear, and this tonight's debate I think has really focused the attention of the American people who not only have a right to vote, but we have a right to know who we can vote for. And with the action of the Commission on Presidential Debates in shutting down a true, real, open debate, I think people are really looking long and hard. And the more that they see of this very toxic and predatory debate, this nitpicking on steroids that is going to take place tonight between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, the more intensively people will be looking for another place to put their votes. That's I think what's going on tonight is a spectacle, it is a disgrace, and it will indeed increase the appetite of the American voter for a true politics of integrity. So I'd say hold on to your hat. The discussion has just begun. We are going to continue fighting. And in fact, tonight, we have a historic development as our campaign is collaborating with Twitter and with Periscope for the first time to actually present an open debate on the free and open internet. My Our answers, our people-powered answers to these questions will be interjected following the Clinton and Trump corporate-powered answers to these questions. Our, quest our answers will also be interjected. These are going to be live streamed together by Twitter and by Periscope available also on our website uh, and our social media. Dr. Jill Stein is so the is address, so please tune in, spread the word, and let's all advance this open debate that is long overdue in America. Thank you. One last question, one last question right here in front. Um, Jill, why did you call for a one new second. investigation of 9-11? I'm sorry? Why did you call for a new investigation of 9-11? So let me just say that um, Robert Graham, who is uh, formerly the head of the 9-11 Commission, called for reopening the uh, investigation so that the American people have a full accounting. There have been many studies that have been released, including thousands of pages of FBI data. Also, Congress unanimously voted to allow the American people and the families of the victims to sue Saudi Arabia to get to the bottom of what exactly happened. So this is not rocket science. This is not some controversial thing. In my view, this is what the basic American people are owed, a full explanation. Thank you. That's the sherry. All right. Let's hear it for Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.